Hello everyone, this is Nintendo Guy, and it's time for a game review. Today's game review is Portal Still Alive for the Xbox 360. Well, to be more precise, Xbox Live Arcade, but this game is on other systems as well. But let's just take a look at this game that Valve made and see if it's a good game. And let's just take a look at it. You just gotta love that little load screen with the guy falling through the portals. It's it's just an awesome load screen. Wow, for a title screen, the music is just creepy. But let me just show you the different options that this game has. First off, you have Start Game, which is the story mode. Then you have Challenge Maps, which I'll get to a bit later. Leaderboards, which just shows you your score and your friend's score and the achievements, but I'll show you the achievements later. Help and Options is basically just instructions, kind of like the games that you would get on the DSi that give you you know, little instruction manuals. And then there's Return to the Arcade if you just want to leave the game. So I think it would be better if we just started the actual storyline of the game so I can review that and get that out of the way. The story of this game is very generic. All you know is you're playing as some chick that's trapped in some research center. Now, what I'd like to know is, did this person apply for the job, or was she kidnapped by a bunch of scientists just so she could be in this research center? Another question is, is she human? Is she a cyborg? The, the game doesn't explain a whole lot of the story. It's just very generic. Not to mention that you don't even know what the character's name is. Serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from... What? Por favor, por donde vayamos a casa? Turn back. The portal will... And this is why you shouldn't jump to Windows Two. Vista. One. The game is a combination of a first-person shooter and puzzle game. The objective is to pick up objects, place them on buttons, or make portals appear to get to the exit. The game requires a lot of concentration and thinking, and there's a lot of strategy planning uh, involved, so there may be times where it will take you a while to figure out these puzzles. Later on in the game, you will come across this portal gun. This portal gun is very useful because then you can make your own portals and transport to different other areas. I guess I should tell you how the portals work. In the game, there are two portals. There's an orange portal and a blue portal. The two portals connect to each other. As you can see, my character is walking back and forth out of both of the portals to transport to different areas. You can also take objects and move them through portals to transport them to other areas. Like I'm doing with this electric ball right here, I'm moving the electric ball so that it can activate the switch and, th and then I can get to the exit. In some of the levels, you'll find some abandoned areas where people used to camp out at when they were at this research center because they went mentally insane and they would write stuff on the walls. I found this old calendar that was from 1983, so do you think people were actually at this research center in 1983? Also, they've been writing stuff like, the cake is a lie and stuff like that. I guess I'll have to get to that later. But it basically just tells you a story of what happened to all those people in the game that used to be in these research, uh, research centers, so the game kind of does give a bit of a storyline. I guess it kind of makes sense why all those people went mentally insane. For one thing, there's security cameras watching you and everything's trying to kill you. There's these evil robots that are trying to shoot you. Speaking of evil robots trying to kill you, it kind of reminds me of another game. It reminds me of Berserk on the Atari 2600, where all those robots are trying to shoot you and you have to navigate through all these mazes and stuff. It's just like in Berserk, except it's a bit different. Are you, still there? you will die a lot in this game. Even some of the stupidest mistakes that you can make can kill you. For example, I shot this electricity ball through this portal, comes back, and it comes back and kills me. Even, like I said, even some of the stupidest mistakes can kill you, and you will die often, but that's what makes this game very challenging. The downsides that the game has to offer are very minor. There's this one minor downside that I found where some of the platforms take too long to appear, and it requires a lot of patience and waiting just for this one platform to appear. But like I said, it's a very minor downside, so it's not that much of a problem. But you know what's a good thing? 
At the end of the game, they promise you that there's cake at the end. See, there's a sign that tells you there's cake, and there's an arrow telling you where you should go to get the cake. Oh man, I can't wait to get the... Ah oh, crap, there's a fiery furnace, we're all gonna die. I guess the cake is a lie thing really meant something. Okay, okay, it turns out that you somehow escape the fiery furnace, but the rest of the game becomes quite interesting. Now you get to l explore the entire building, even all the abandoned areas that were there. And you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Metroid Prime. For two reasons. One, it's a first person shooter, and two, you're exploring all these abandoned area, dark areas, just like in Metroid Prime. I'm not saying that Portal's a ripoff of Metroid Prime, I'm just saying that this part of the game reminds me of another good game, which is a good thing. So I guess that's enough of the story, uh, story mode, because I don't want to spoil the rest for you, so let's take a look at the other stuff that the game has to offer. Actually, I'm sorry, there's just a few more things I forgot to point out. One thing, you, fr uh, you can save every t uh, whenever you want, even when you pass a checkpoint. And another thing I wanted to point out is that there's director commentary in this game. So you click on speech bubbles and you get to hear the developers of the game talk about the game. This director's commentary is pretty much just a tour, like you're wandering around and then they talk about bits and pieces of the game and stuff. I wish the commentaries would go throughout the entire game while you play, and having the option to rewind the commentaries and stuff. But another thing I find annoying about the commentaries is when the computer voice starts talking, and again, memorable object to the so that when they walk through the portal for the first time, they have a clear point of reference which communicates the idea that there's while the commentaries are going, you have to stop the commentary and then replay the commentary, uh, just sections of the commentary again, just so you can listen to it again. Well, that's it for story mode, but let's take a look at challenge maps. In challenge maps, they give you extra levels that you can play through, and the main objective is to try to solve the puzzle and get to the exit as quickly as possible, but some of the challenge maps are really challenging and really hard. And then there's also the achievements, and, and this is where you can look at what kind of achievements you can get and to help add up your gamer score. At least the game is nice enough to give you hints, just like every other Xbox 360 game, to help you get the achievements. In conclusion, Portal is a really good game. If you like first-person shooters and puzzle games, this is a good, a good game for you. I wouldn't call it one of the best games on the Xbox 360, but it's a good game. So. This is the end of this review, so this is Nintendo Guys saying take care and see you later.